Welcome back to my little channel. Okay, so I got sent this link to a video. And this video is really, really trying to tug those heartstrings because, man, oh man, please, people in the world, pay attention to what's going on. Because uh, the far right is taking over. And we need to be very much afraid. Well... Let's see about it, shall we? I'll respond to what is being said in the video. So yeah, you're going to get the video as well. I'm curious though, what do you think? So I hope you will take the time to watch through it all. And criticism, as always, is more than welcome. Meet Hannah. She's 19. She lives in a suburb of a big city with her mother and two younger siblings. They have a small apartment. Two of her friends were recently harassed by a group of young men of North African descent. I find it especially interesting that they don't bother to tell us in which country Hana lives. Now it is true that in most European countries there is a problem with the African and Middle Eastern migrants, let's call them migrants because let's be nice, but um, it depends in which country you are though. Now in France it's really bad, the shit is hitting the fan there, and in Germany it's also not good, but in the UK tens of thousands of girls have been groomed and raped and harassed, and there have been a few that spoke out against it, went to the police and got killed. This is not me making this shit up. So I would like to think that Hannah may have a reason to be, at least to say, scared. Now maybe she shouldn't blame all the foreigners, fair enough, but um, I can't really say that she's exaggerating. The cousin of one of her friends has since warned her that migrants will take over the suburb, the city, and soon the entire country. You know, this may be an unjustified fear. I agree. At the same time, though, it may be a justified fear. Because, again, if we look at the grooming gang incident in the UK, because I know more about that than the shit going on in France, the public was kept dumb. And when the public found out, the police tried to prevent the public from speaking about it. And when the public started speaking about it and the police couldn't stop it anymore, politicians tried to tell people that they were bad people for talking about it. So um, I'm not really sure if it is an unjustified fear, especially because of the way the politicians deal with it. The cousin says girls and women should be extra careful. Seems like good advice, don't you think? Too bad we've come to this. He also tells Hannah that he and his friends are forming a network to protect the country against migrants. This network has links with other like-minded networks throughout Europe and with a network in the United States. And that's what happens when people feel that they are not safe and the government isn't helping them, they organize themselves. But the most important thing of this small message is this. We call them far right, but they organize with people in other countries. I remember that the far right was once seen as an ultra-nationalistic group, but if they are willing to work with people from other countries, is it then still ultra-nationalistic? Or may there be something else at play? Hannah has met some of the cousin's friends and thinks one of them is cute. He invited her to a three-day summer festival. Oh no, a girl? Liking a boy? Honestly. Not quite sure why this was added to the whole story because it doesn't... Hannah tells her mother about her fear of being harassed and how she feels safer now she is friends with a group trying to stop migrants from taking over the country. She's looking forward to the festival. Her mother is worried that her daughter is on a way of joining a far-right extremist movement, but does not know what to do. She calls the community police for assistance. 
Now I understand the mother doesn't know what to do. Obviously we don't always have all answers ourselves. But I am curious that the mother is worried that she might become far right and she needs help. But she didn't seem that worried when her daughter was harassed, or at least the story didn't tell it. So it's worse that she becomes far right, but it's a mere inconvenience that she gets harassed. It, it must be me not understanding this, I guess. We asked RAND practitioners to share their opinions about the case of Hannah. And I will only use the English speaking ones. I think the community police could help the mother with, with finding other contacts, other institutions which maybe know um, strategies or ways or have programs for individuals like that or even for parents which are concerned so that she kind of is linked to institutions which um, have more specific knowledge on the case. Now I could make a joke about how her name isn't really something that I would think of as German but in all fairness Mosaic in Hamburg is kind of known as a positive influence on society so I'll believe that this is the case and why not there are plenty of an immigrant in our society that are contributing to our society but what I do find interesting is that the advice is to go to the police to see if they can help her stop her daughter turning extreme why not go to the police to help her daughter feel safe on the street by arresting the ones that no to 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 up front to to forward the violent far right extremism has at this time three main targets and obviously the far right must be violent even though no real example of that violence has been given i mean so far the only one that were victims of violence were the girls foreigners xenophobia muslims and jews well potentially only one of the target well they will target only one of the three but potentially the three so foreigners muslims and jews now we know that Jews have more to fear from Muslims than from native people, but um, yeah, okay. There are Muslims that are foreigner. There are Jews that are foreigner. There are also Muslims and Jews that are native. Um, I, I think your category of three is perhaps a little bit oversimplificated. And I would add to some extent what we call the system. So they will, they will be anti-system, anti-state, anti-government, anti-institutions, everything. And what, pray tell, may be the reason for them to be anti-state, anti-government, anti-whatever you want to say? Could it have anything to do with the fact that they feel, justly or unjustly, that the government and the state that they contribute to is not protecting them. Now again, if we look at what happened in the UK. Definitely the um, hatred towards migrants is something that is one of the, uh, one of the pillars of the uh, far-right uh, extremist narratives. Why are we ignoring the fact that the girl in this example has every reason to be scared? One of the experts that they invited to talk on this run is a French dude who basically said, well, there is no father in the home, so there's that. And what the far right extremists are doing is they're painting the picture that there's a problem, that we are in danger right now. And I'm like, okay. I agree that no father in the home is probably not a good thing, but how are we not currently in danger? In France, there have been so many terror attacks, there have been churches going up in flames, people have been attacked. Again, 
the whole grooming gang scandals in the UK. Is that not an issue? Then again, I didn't show you the guy, so I'm not going to shoot, put too much points on this one. And I didn't show you the guy because he talks French and... Yeah. The first assessment probably to do with, uh, in Anna's case, would be to check how anchored she is with this far-right extremist ideology or if it is just a very superficial engagement because just because she is afraid by while well, this colored people living in our neighborhood because of this fear and because of the stories of uh, uh, harassment that she heard from uh, her friends uh, maybe she just looks for a, what a way to reassure herself I can't help but feel that this is very condescending I mean well maybe she's not really anchored with the idea of the far-right extremists and maybe she's just afraid you yeah, know does he have a reason to be afraid I mean People around her are getting harassed. She knows plenty of story. Yeah, but, 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 she's just afraid. But there's a reason why she's afraid. She's not afraid because these people have a brown skin color. That's an oversimplification that is absolutely not justified. She's afraid because people get attacked. People get murdered. Buildings burn. Bloody hell. It's almost as if certain fears are not allowed to be real. I mean, if you're afraid for all of these things, then you, you must be far right. Well, that way everyone is far right that doesn't agree with the let's push multiculturalism ideology. And, and I fear that that's the real issue here. It's not that... Um, she might or might not like foreigners because that's nothing to do with it she's afraid because she and people she knows are getting attacked how is this not victim blaming in the network i'm active at which is called mosaic um, it's it's in hamburg and we work um, to build projects or environments for individuals to exchange ideas, to talk about um, certain topics that are important to them in their lives, also about politics, also about society, and also to create safer spaces for them to talk about experiences that they have. And, um, and this really helps to uh, build critical thinking skills. See, everything she says, I can agree to. I mean, yeah, sure, people are allowed to have their own safe spaces now that's not what she's really talking about she's talking about how people get together and talk about what can we do with politics and what can we do with our situation and how can we see how can we look at things and the funny thing is she ends with trying to explain she wants to promote people ability of critical thinking you know, critical thinking is the analysis of facts to form a judgment. Now, it's difficult to do that because facts aren't subjective, but we can give subjective meaning to them. For example, the fact is that in Hamburg and in Köln and in other great cities in Germany during New Year's Eve, a lot of women got assaulted by a bunch of non-German celebrators. Let's call them that, shall we? Now, critical thinking can be like, okay, these women needed to be safe. What could we do to prevent this from happening? Okay, well, we could have, have more police out on the streets to prevent this from happening. Would that have helped? Well, probably. Or is there something else we could have done? Well, we could have removed the criminal element Wait a second, but the criminal element were new Germans. Let's call them new Germans. Don't call them refugees, don't call them immigrants, don't call them illegals. Just call them new Germans. 
see where this is going. But we're not to go there. So you don't want them to learn critical thinking. You want them to learn, by better word of explaining, I would call it echo thinking. This is what we tell you, therefore this is what you must think. It's not nice of me, but this is the message. We can't talk about what's going on, therefore the person's talking about it must be alt-right. Well, we share our stories. We share our stories as somebody of the oppressed group. Um, and uh, through our stories, youngsters many times under understand that, uh, that, it is not, that it is easy to hate. Uh, but it requires a lot of effort to really understand. And we offer them that time that can spend with us to learn through our stories how painful it can be if somebody just hates us because of the belonging to the group that is being hated. Um, and we try to really work on those fears. I think that emotions and, and fears are part of that. And uh, we try to comfort uh, those youngsters by really talk, just talking. Uh, so if they have a fear about uh, migration, but they have never met any migrant, um, for them it is pretty shocking if they meet somebody and finally realize that those people can be just um, really normal part of the society um, and, and, and should be there. And they can also ask questions, they can uh, just face their fears. So living libraries and, and storytelling is definitely one of the core that we, work, that we use in our work. By now, the trend is more than merely clear. People hating foreigners do so because they don't know what they're talking about. But even in the example they give themselves of Hannah, a girl afraid because of violence being used against her and her friends, she knows who she's afraid of. Now I agree with the talker that, yeah, you know what, sometimes we need to get to learn the foreigner to give him a chance in our society. But I don't need to learn the one who attacks me. I agree that there are plenty of foreigners that should have a chance to have a normal life within our society. But I do not agree that we need to silently accept the criminal to overtake our safety. This is not about stories. This is about recognizing that there is something going on in our society and we're not even allowed to talk about it. Because as soon as we do, we're some kind of ist or ope. And then we have these beautiful people telling us why we are wrong. But they bring this video, they started with a case. And then everything they say has nothing to do with the case. Oh no, well, the girl, yeah, no, no, she, she, she doesn't like the foreigner, she doesn't know the foreigner. She's been attacked or harassed by them. She has friends that have madness. Yeah, but she, she, she's got far-right friends. No, well, I mean, she's talking to other people who had similar experiences and they want to keep their community safe. Can you blame them? Hell, I know immigrants that agree with the far-right that we need to take law back. We need to save our society. We need to keep people safe. Well, obviously they're immigrants, so they can't be far right aid soon. Uh, then again, knowing the progressive left, they probably are far right. They've got internalized white supremacy or something. But the nonsense of attacking a girl, telling her why she's wrong, because she's scared. If that's not victim blaming, I don't know what is. I would invite Hannah to the Mosaic Project, of course, and um, and give her the feeling that she is that that her voice is very important, and not only give her the feeling, also <laughs> give her the platform to voice her opinion and to kind of to get engaged in, in in a movement or in some action that she really wants to see in her society. That's funny because the whole video is about how she shouldn't do 
just that because she seemed to be engaged never mind double speak is nothing if not double uh, if we give them the opportunity to express themselves uh, and if we give them the alternative uh, towards extremists um, so somewhere where they can be useful because I believe that everybody especially youngsters they want to feel that they are useful for the society so we should give them the opportunity to be useful otherwise somebody else will take them and again you're uh, more than welcome to say what you want and how you think but um, just as long as you don't tell us what you want and think if it goes against what we want and think the, the, the thing with the alt-right or right-wing extremism even and I don't think the alt-right is that is that it comes from somewhere and to pretend that it's a whole bad thing all by itself is absolutely ignoring the reality where it springs from. Now I'm not in favor of ethno-national states. I mean, I have no problem with people of different ethnicities living in the same country as I do. Now I prefer them to be of the same culture as me, but that has nothing to do with ethnicity. But to pretend that people having a problem with this based on measurable events is downright dishonest. You people aren't talking about how you want to help the world, you're talking about how you want to indoctrinate the world. <sighs> okay, nearly done. The belief that one's in-group is the victim of a conspiracy of out-groups is one of the foundations of every extremist ideology. The subsequent victimhood narrative, we are under attack, you need help, forms a key component of extremist propaganda and recruiting efforts. To promote alternative narratives and counter-narratives and protect vulnerable youth, it is important for practitioners to foster critical thinking and media literacy. This also means identifying, drawing attention to and raising awareness of propaganda and manipulation effects. You would almost be forgiven to take this serious because let's be honest it is but not in this case now where I agree that xenophobia is an issue it becomes a whole different ball game when that fear is not based on well the other is scary but the facts that people have been attacked that people have died, that people have been raped, that grooming has going on. The thing is, we can't pretend that this is not the case, even though the mass media at this point in time has done everything they can to downplay the reality of it all. And they've done it so far that people now are recognizing that they are being lied to by their own media. So. The problem is that we're not taking the issues serious and we are blaming people that recognize the fact that the issues aren't being taken serious. This isn't us versus them in the traditional way. This isn't the way that people like to see. Well, I mean, it's just the right, far right extremists being nasty to foreigners. No, there's more to the story. There is far more. To the story and to downplay the reality of it all basically shows one thing you are not interested in a society where people live together foreigners and domestic citizens you're not interested in that at all because if you were you would point out that where crime has been committed criminals should be punished but that not all foreigners are criminals. With that, I would no doubt have stood beside you. But your whole video is about how the alt-right, far-right, blah, 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 is bad. But they are a response to what's going on in our society. It's not that one is good and the other is bad. It's that they're both the reality 
we live in. And we need to take this serious. But we can't. Because as soon as someone speaks out, they're an ist or an ob. And that way, you force the narrative underground. Now, there are many an example that prove how this will end. None of them are how I would prefer it to end. What was the saying again? If you make peaceful demonstrations impossible. Yeah. Anyway, like, share and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Criticism, as always, is more than welcome. I really look forward to hear what you think. And I hope to see you all next time.